perfect his power his anointing on the earth uh, and so you know while people may be looking and, and yes of course Israel is going to be uh, surrounded Jerusalem is going to be surrounded you know half of Jerusalem is going to fall to the Antichrist mm -hmm. uh, you know the the, the 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 amassed armies of the of the Muslims uh, are going to be marching down uh, why would why would Islam support the Antichrist I, I believe he's going to offer them Jerusalem has to Mm -hmm. Because that's been the N word after every one of these spring uprisings. Yep. The promise of. On to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That's their theme. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, I think what we need to understand right now, what's happening. For, and, and, and uh, you know, I don't know why people in the West just don't get it. Um, you see, with the separation of church and state, you, you take a, a nation like Iran... Um, you know, in the whole Islamic world, there's no separation of religion Absolutely. And, and church. No, it's mm -hmm. one. Mm -mm. And, and that's really how it should be for us. It should be. You know, as believers. So, mm -hmm. so in Iran, the pr current president of Iran, Ahmadinejad, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Muslims are waiting for the emergence of the 12th Imam, this the great Mahdi. prophet, the Mahdi. Right. And... Uh, uh, Ahmadinejad claims to have seen the Mahdi. Has I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He says he's visited him several times. He was born in the 13th century. He lives in a cave outside of Tehran. And uh, Ahmadinejad has been to see him and uh, has been given a mandate. According to, well, well, who did Ahmadinejad meet? He obviously met a spirit. <laughs> yeah, he met a spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just like Muhammad met a spirit. Mm -hmm. He met many spirits. Mm -hmm. And so, Ahmadinejad and his entire cabinet have made a blood covenant with their own blood that they have committed Iran to worldwide revolution. Uh, that hasn't made the news. No, of course it isn't no. going to make the news. It's not even going to make the news in the West. And the reason why we have to understand that that uh, according to the Koran, the, the, there's got to be worldwide revolution before the, 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 the Mahdi is revealed and the Mahdi will be the person who brings worldwide peace. Now there you see, Muhammad got everything confused, you know, because he was trained by a renegade bishop of the Roman Catholics and, uh, and, 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 a, and a, a rabbi. So, you know, from the rabbi, he learned that, you know, Jesus isn't the son of God. God has no son. Jesus certainly isn't the son of God. And, and of course, from the, from the Catholics, he, he learned that Mary was everything. So, you know, that's why in Islam, Mary is honored. Uh, and of course, Muhammad got everything twisted. He was an uneducated, you know, he couldn't read or write. Um, and, and, and so, you know, he, he listened to everything and twisted it all around. You know, he twisted Isaac for, you know, Ishmael and everything confused mm -hmm. about Islam. And mm -hmm. imagine a, a holy book that names its chapters after spirits, demon spirits. So, um, so Ahmadinejad believes he has this tremendous uh, mandate uh, from the Mahdi to... Uh, his, his foment worldwide re revolution so that the Mahdi can come and establish peace. Um, and that's why Iran is critical, really critical in well, not only what's happening in the Middle East, but what's, what's going to happen worldwide. And uh, Israel's going to have to deal with it. Um, Even though we're saying, oh, it'll take care of itself. I'm saying the U.S. saying that. Our president. The U.S. The U.S. desperately wants uh, Israel to deal with Iran yeah. um, on its own, mm -hmm. to deal with the problem and back off and say, well, we had nothing to yeah, do with it. It was their choice, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Of course, that's just politics, but that isn't going to work like that, and we all know it isn't going to work like that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but what we need to do is we really need to understand why the Muslim is the way he is. Why does he think the way he thinks? Why is he so committed? And again, to this understanding that is in Islamic thinking, 
the only absolute guarantee of a Muslim going to paradise is to die in holy war jihad. Mm -hmm. So the Muslims are, are, are just longing for this declaration of jihad. And of course, we've seen that in, in Sudan. We've seen, you know, yes. the amassed armies, uh, you know, of, of, of the Hezbollah and the, uh, and the Middle East all coming down, the Iraqis, the Iranians, the, you know, the, <clears throat> the Syrians coming down to fight against the Sudanese, the southern Sudanese. And uh, as long as they understood that it was jihad, they were more than willing to die, more than willing to die. And um, you know, my friend who was the general in the Southern Sudanese army, uh, he, he captured, took a letter of a, a dare, dead Arab, couldn't have been much more than 18 years old. He, the, the boy had written a, a letter to home to his mother the night before this battle in which he died, saying, mother, don't weep for me. Uh, when I die in this war, I've gone to paradise. Um, but be sure to send my younger brother to take my place so that he may also have the honor of dying in this holy war and joining me in paradise. Well, can you imagine a Christian mother writing home that kind of a letter to her Christian son? Or a brother writing mm -hmm. to his brother, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a mother releasing her, her you know, they only hope they're going to paradise. Mm -hmm. I absolutely know That's right. where I'm going. That's right. The Christian. It is so sad. So, you know, if, if we believers, if we were only ready, I mean truly ready to die for Jesus, uh, then we would live for him. Yes. And I think that's the problem that's with the church. We're not ready to die for Jesus so that we're sure not ready to live for him. Uh-huh. That's right. That's a good point. I agree wholeheartedly. So, you know, as, a, as we look at the end times, you know, we're, we're looking at this upheaval. Now, I don't think we should think Jesus is coming back next year or in a decade's time. You know, there's still a lot of things that mm -hmm. have to happen on the earth. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not even beginning to date or time when Jesus comes. But we're in the season of his coming. There's no doubt about that. Sure. And... Um, we, we need to relook at Revelation, mm -hmm. not from the perspective of the Antichrist or the, or the, you know, the mark of the beast and you know, our fears. And, and God gave me a word the other day, actually. I was really praying about you know, the church and the end times. And, and he said the only way that uh, a believer is going to be overwhelmed by the Antichrist system is through fear. Mm -hmm. Fear is going to open the door. I believe that. Yeah. Fear, great fear. Um, so, you know, you think about the children of Israel. And let's remember, they are the church in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. now, coming out, blood bought, as it were, mm -hmm. you know, brought out of Egypt, you know, through, through the Red Sea, baptized in the cloud, and for 40 years wandering in the wilderness, as long as they stayed under the umbrella of God's government, God's order, God's anointing. They were protected, they were provided for, and, uh, and, they, and his, right. his tangible presence was with, mm -hmm. with them every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the scorpions were there, the serpents were there. Of but course. As long as they were under the covering of God, the scorpions could never sting them, mm -hmm. the serpents could never bite them, and the enemy could never come nigh them. That's right. And, and then, you know, for 40 years, God fed them on manna. Mm -hmm. And I'll be so glad when the supermarkets are no longer available to us Christians. We'll have to trust God to feed us with the bread mm -hmm. of life. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he will. He will. Absolutely he will. Um, you know, but we get afraid. Mm -hmm. Oh, what happens if I can't go to the supermarket? What happens if I can't buy? What happens if I can't sell? What happens, you know? <sighs> Look up and rejoice. How are people supposed to guard themselves against fear, Michael? There's only one way. The perfect love of God casts out all fear. Mm -hmm. You know, f f you cannot say, I, I am in love with the Lord and have fear because the two cannot cohabit together. Right? So if, I, if I'm fully in love with the Lord, if I'm excited about God and passionately in love with Him, uh, and I come to the realization that I'm, 
I belong to him no matter what. Um, that's not, you know, that's not an easy thing. That's not an easy place for people to, to reach. It's not. You know, I really do have to die to myself. Mm -hmm. but, but as the Holy Ghost leads me, I come to that place of, you know, I belong to the Lord. I totally belong to the Lord. I know that whatever happens in my life is God's will. Because I've surrendered to him, utterly surrendered to him. So, you know, Lord, I'm so in love with you. Nothing else matters. Then fear cannot come in. And if it tries to come in, it'll be banished immediately. Because yeah. it can't live together in that environment. Mm -hmm. I wish that were one of the things that the pulpits were teaching today. Um, to teach people the love of God to the point. Well, I, I'm probably not saying that right. Because all they have taught is the love. and. Well, it's a wishy-washy love. Yeah. It's a sentimental I'm, love. I'm talking about the kind of love you're talking about. The keeping, saving love. If we know that we serve a God like that, who is absolutely trustworthy, then that will eliminate the fear. Like you said, the love of God. Cast Correct. And, and, you know, the Lord <laughs> says in his word that we try him. Try me. I know. You know? Test me. You know, see if I won't pour out a blessing mm -hmm. on you. See, mm -hmm. see if, I, if I'm not true to my word. And, and, and I think we, we're in that place. God, you know, I don't want to just, I just don't want to test you and try you, you know, for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. You know, to see, Lord, if you know, Lord, I, I know that you're so real. And, and, and I'm stepping out in boldness with you. I'm stepping out in obedience to you. Yeah. And, 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 and when these situations arise, I just know that you're going to come through. You're going to deliver me. You're going to set me free. You're going to heal me. You're going to provide for me supernaturally. You're going to you're going to do all the things that you did for the church in the wilderness. And 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 again, why did the church in the wilderness fail? They failed through disobedience. That's right. You know? And Paul now, did they go to hell? No, they didn't go to hell. You know, that's the problem again. You know, the church is always going to make this heaven or hell. Uh -huh. You know? No, they didn't enter the land of rest. That's right. They didn't enter into the blessing of rest, you know? Mm -hmm. If we only knew the blessing there is to rest in God, Lord, this is your work. I'm just your instrument. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so in love with you. I'm so excited about you. I'm passionate about you. You've told me to do this, or you've told me to go there, uh, or you've told me to give this, and I'm just going to rest in you. Mm -hmm. And even if I made a mistake, Lord, you're big enough to cover my mistake. That's right. Hallelujah. Yep. Isn't that so? <laughs> so very true. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, you know, we don't need to worry. Uh, you know, um, people say, well, you know, I'm afraid. You're afraid of what? The unknown. But there is no unknown with God. You see? That's right. He's that's the all-knowing God. He, he, that's right. He's already gone before us. Yes. You know, the earth is his. Everything mm -hmm. is his. He knows it all. He's, mm -hmm. you know, he's Lord of it all. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of the problems. This is one of the areas where we've made such a, a mistake. Either we've been taught wrong or we've thought wrong or we never bothered to sit down and study the word and get the real truth of God's word is, is the whole area of the devil being given too much power, mm -hmm. more than he should, by each individual believer. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? Yes. That, 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 you know, or more influence. Or, you know, and I, that's not to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I think of the Second World War, you know, and the, the tremendous uh, suffering, bombardment of, of Britain, for instance, yeah. until the Bible College of Wales, mm -hmm. you know, began to intercede, began to take, a, take on, on the burden mm -hmm. of intercession, uh, for, for not just Britain, for the whole world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, what, what people don't realize is that, that, that Hitler was a Satanist. And, uh, and uh, the, the word that came to Mr. Howells was that he's a type of the Antichrist before his time. Mm -hmm. uh, and you think about all of his, all of what happened under his mm -hmm. rule mm -hmm. you know, and his desire to establish a thousand-year reign mm -hmm. now the millennial kingdom of, mm -hmm. of almighty 
mighty God, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't invent empty. anything new. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I just now got he, that. He's, he's never original. No. Everything that the devil does, he takes it from the word and corrupts it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing original about him. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And if we could only understand mm -hmm. that too. Um, and so, you know, say, uh, Hitler was a Satanist priest. Uh, he used to, he used to, uh, he used to have um, black mass, uh, drinking his own urine and eating his own excrement. Um, you know, in his in his desire to honor Satan, mm -hmm. and uh, and, and everything that he did was to the the the, the guidance of his spirit mediums. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he would go to his seances and his meetings and he, they would call up these spirit mediums and he directed the whole war was directed by the spirit mediums. That why, that's why he was so unbelievably successful mm -hmm. uh, to begin with. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when the Bible College of Wales began to intercede, really took on the burden of God um, and broke through with God to victory, was when uh, the the Lord, whether he used Michael the Archangel or whoever, but uh, God confused, was then able mm -hmm. to confuse. And I and I guess the the great example is Daniel. You know, when Daniel didn't stop praying. You know, here's the messenger trying to come through to Daniel. He's withheld, detained, uh, in the spirit realm. You know, by the the prince of Persia. Mm -hmm and uh, can't get through to Daniel, but Daniel doesn't stop praying. Mm -hmm. and that, that's what happens with us. We give up, we quit. Mm -hmm. But Daniel carried on praying and praying mm -hmm. until Michael was released into that war through the intercessions of Daniel. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, then, and then he was able to get the message through, um, the messenger through to Daniel mm -hmm. to, to interpret the vision. Um, and that's what happened with the Bible College of Wales through their persistence, their ongoing intercession, day in and day out, night in and night out. And Mr. Hal said, we cannot fight less in prayer than all of our soldiers are fighting on the battlefront. Mm -hmm. So that was the kind of commitment. Wow. And, and that, that's how the church should be today. Yes. We, we can't pray less. We can't fight less in battle than our soldiers are fighting on the battlefront. Mm -hmm. um, until they broke through with God. And the moment that that happened, uh, God confused the enemy and Hitler that's when he withdraw withdrew his whole air force from the Battle of Britain and when his when his um, his air vice marshals and air marshals asked him what why did you do that he, he told them because uh, I was confused my, my, my spirits were confused that's the first time he admitted to the fact that his spirit mediums were confused uh, and that was the beginning of the end of the war Hallelujah. Yeah, through prayer. Now, of mm -hmm. course, you know, the historians, uh, you know, the, they're never going to admit that. But that's the truth mm -hmm. of what happened. Mm -hmm. And that's the power that God has given us. Amen. We just got to keep at it. Mm -hmm. 